So we all know there are times when bass and saltwater species feed a little more selectively. Enrico Puglisi fibers let you tie flies that have a strong profile and lifelike proportions. The trick for me is to get different actions with these materials, and adding weighted eyes is one way to do this. Here's a shad pattern that does that. So put a 60 degree jig hook into your vise and start the thread at about the quarter spot. We're going to create a little bump here for your eyes and we use these so that the fly rides hook up and so that it has a different action. Just grab your eyes and attach them with crisscross wraps. I go around, crisscross, wrap around each eye and wrap in front and behind. Then add some super glue since it's really important that your eyes stay where they are so that the fly doesn't get twisted up after a fish or two. Then continue wrapping around these eyes in a similar way until they're solid. Let's make this quick. Just create a thread base on the fly. Then tie off and call it good. I do this if I'm using GSP, otherwise just use some UTC 140 throughout. Attach the GSP now. Pull on the thread like you mean it before you snip it. Now wrap back to the back. For more detail on Puglisi fibers, see the video above. For this pattern, we're going to need six full pieces. Two will be thin mid ties cut down the center, one will be full length, three will be cut down the middle for high and lows, one will be thicker and cut into four pieces. Finally, you need two small thick pieces for around the eyes. Let's grab the full length one now. So set this guy down on the shank, then tie right in the middle of it. Just wrap back and then bring in some lateral scale. Just wrap it around the thread and pull it up onto the shank. Then wrap over it. After this, we're going to wrap the other piece back, and this will be the tail section. What I like to do here is measure out the point to where I need to go with the mid, high, and low sequence. There will be three, so we need to make it to this point by the time we're done. Here's the first high tie. just going to repeat what you did with the tail more or less. Just give it a little pinch with the thread to prop it up a bit. For the low tie, wrap the fibers around the thread and pull them flush. Then poke the point through the center of the fibers. wrap them against the hook. Two more high lows. We're going to repeat this process two more times. Make sure that your thread's been advanced far enough, then tie the fibers down. With this fiber, make sure that you're tying it up far enough to meet our marking point. Check it and adjust it if you need to. Then wrap back on the second half. Yet again, bring up another piece, stick the point through it, and tie it down. Okay, so here's a mid tie. Use the thicker of the two pieces here. Just wrap it around the thread, bring it up, and bring it down. it on both sides and you're done. We're going to add some wing and flash here. I like to wrap it around all of the fibers as much as possible. Just wrap loosely and then fold the other half back and tie it down.
Spruce it up a bit and adjust the fibers to go around the full pattern as best possible. Then tighten it down. Let's get our last high-low piece here. Okay, you're a pro by now, so I'm going to shut up and let you do the work. I like to add another sparse mid-tie here as well. I cut a little off these so they don't extend too far back. Deja vu on these guys as well. Yes, that's more flash. Just work those fibers back as best you can. Eventually they'll get there. You can give the pattern a combing here now. With the shorter sections, we're going to wrap them around the shank 360 degrees. Set them in about midway and wrap around them. Then tease the front pieces around the eyes and tie them back. As exciting as it is, we're going to do the same thing here. Now for some real excitement. Get the first thicker piece. Okay, excitement over. With this piece though, just get it as close to the eyes as possible and do what you've done twice already. Make sure that the eyes are poking out though. You can adjust it before you tighten it down completely as well. Now pull back those fibers like you're gently shucking some corn. We're ready for the thickest piece now. Twist your thread to make it tighter. You've done it three times now, but just make sure that you stay as close to the eyes as possible. Sometimes you need to make a few more wraps on this one. Second to last, but still monotonous. Finally, the last piece. Just wrap relatively close to the eyes and continue your work. Separate and adjust the fibers first. Now spruce and whip finish the fly. You 
can give it a little combing while it's still in the vise as well if you like. Then add some zappa gap. Now set it on your leg and really give it a good combing until it's pretty flat, but above all make sure it's blended. Now we're going to cut the fly to shape. I like to use templates with EP fibers, so I recommend you do the same here. I first make a little hole in the template and squeeze it over the eyes without tearing it. Then I have a perfect template for every other pattern I tie. Now just match the tail point with the lateral scale flash. Start cutting on top and just work your way back. Make a few cuts around the hook point here, it's a little bit tricky. Then continue cutting back all the way. Also make sure that you keep the same line as you cut, otherwise you're going to end up with a crappy looking fly. Don't forget to do the same for both sides. You've got the basic shape, make any finishing cuts you need to make. Here I'll cut on both sides to round the shape a little bit too. Now let's do some marker work. This one's a little complicated. Just make a dot by continuously pressing down. Once again, do it on both sides. Okay, it's not complicated. Now bring up your silver marker and use a piece of paper behind it so that you don't paint your dining room table. Then make strokes with the fibers but don't go crazy here because you don't need a lot. Also you might end up coloring your hook a little but you can scrape this off with your fingernail. Use this as a jumping off point for your own weighted and keeled patterns. This is just one of many options. Thanks again.